So it's been barely three years since Yeti Cycles introduced their Switch technology suspension platform, which was on their SB line of bikes, which have proven to be extremely popular. But that entire time, they were working on a whole nother platform that was employing what they've learned in the past from their downhill program. And they've invited us here to Golden, Colorado, their headquarters, um, to ride and hang out and take a look at their new technology. So let's go check it out. We're here at uh, Yeti Cycles headquarters in Golden, Colorado. We're here with Chris Conroy. The uh, what is your title? I'm, I'm the president. The president. I'm one of the owners. And who? I'm uh, vice president and also one of the owners. And uh, we're here to talk about all this stuff. <laughs> What's all this stuff on the table? So you guys just uh, you just came out with Switchlink. What less than three years ago? Yeah, it was about three years ago. About three years ago. And uh, we're looking at a whole new redesign here. Why, why so soon? WTF. <laughs> LOL. Um, yeah, it's kind of a weird thing, right? We just came out with, uh, with a new technology. And now three years later, we're, we're launching something new. Um, you know, the switch technology was awesome. We learned a ton from the switch technology. And kind of through that process, we, we merged it with some other technology we've been working on, on the rail. and. Um, did some prototyping right about when we launched the Switch, and it was good enough that we felt like we needed to go to market with it. And it's kind of silly, you know, we could have ridden that horse for a while because it's a great platform, uh, but we think it's a huge step forward in what we've done in the past. So racing's always been a huge part of Yeti's heritage and, you know, really helped us push product development um, back in the 2003. Era. It, yes. And that's where the rail system was actually proven, right? Where? Yeah, it was proven. It was in our product line probably two years after that. Yeah. Um, tested extensively. Um, What's the impetus for going to, for using this linear movement design rather than like a link type system? Great question. <laughs> so the eccentric switch uh, system that we currently have in our lineup, uh, we developed that about three years ago. Um, we could immediately see the benefits from the system. And it was an eye-opener for both Stretch and myself in the fact that maybe we don't need as much linear translation as we've had in the past. This right here would do about three inches. With the eccentric, we were moving it between a total of four to six millimeters. Right, but it was moving on an arc, it wasn't moving straight up and down. Moving on an arc, correct. But once we saw that system, we're like, what are the limitations? What can we improve on? Where, what can we test for further down the road? That's what we do as a company. We're always testing, we're racing, and we're testing, seeing what we can push it to next. Yeah. Looking at that eccentric, we're like, hey, right away, we can put that on a rail. We can make that linear. That'll give us a ton more adjustability and maybe a lot more tunability on the kinematic side. Yeah. So if you, know, if you were to kind of explain the benefits of going from the switch to the switch infinity link, Right. Um, how would you explain that? What are the drawbacks of the switch? <clears throat> in, trail, in trail terms, like right. how yeah. it feels when you're Yeah, what's the benefit to the rider? Like, what are you feeling? So, you, I mean, you guys keep coming back to the question. You're like, everybody loved the Switch Eccentric. You guys hit it on the head, selling like crazy. There's no complaints. Well, we've ridden it so much. Yeah, there's no complaints, but internally we have some things that we like to improve, improve upon. And Riding our trails, you know, you've got the small bump sensitivity. Uh, was great on the switch. We wanted to improve it, right? Um, going through hard impacts, descending. Uh, you know, sometimes we felt things could stack up. It was repetitive hard impacts. Maybe there'd be a firmness in suspension we wanted to have that seamless feel. 
that transition right. really from your anti-squat into your suspension, deep in your suspension trap. So is it like the rotating of the centric link that's kind of like hanging up? Yeah, at some point, like it's like the suspension starts to stack and it can't recover. There is a spot in the system as that eccentric goes to switch directions, where there's some forces going on from we rear wheel impact to the switch of that mechanism, where it can lock up and it confirm your suspension just for that instance. It's, and that's why the vertical movement is good. It solves those those exactly. Problems. So that vertical movement on the rail solves two big problems or two issues that we wanted to improve upon. The first is small bump sensitivity. You have that that rail. It's moving perpendicular mostly to your forces, so it's not influenced by those forces nearly as much as that eccentric. So you're hitting small bump. It's much more plush and it can react much quicker than the eccentric could. Also at that spot in the travel where it would lock up, where the eccentric's trying to come back forward, yeah. that doesn't exist any longer. So it can get past that point and the rider never feels it.